Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we are going to study equivalent fractions. Now, first I wrote here a typical problem from a math book uh, having to do with equivalent fractions, okay? And the student has to find the number that goes here. And um, many times students forget, you know, after a while, they forget what to do. They might remember that it had to do with multiplication and division, but they might be confused by these big numbers and not remember what to do. So I want to show you a method of how to teach equivalent fractions so students will understand the concept. And we start with the visual model, okay? And in this visual model, we have two thirds here, and we are going to make an equivalent fraction here and show what happens in the model. What happens is we split each piece into so many new pieces, this time into three new pieces. And so I take here, I divide this into three new pieces, and this one, and this one. Each piece, whether it is colored or not, needs divided into three new pieces. And now all we need to do is just count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six colored pieces and nine total, right? So we got six ninths. And then I have drawn arrows here, and now I'm going to write here, 2 times 3 is 6, and then 3 times 3 equals 9. These little times 3s are indicating how many pieces we split into the existing pieces. And um, I like this kind of notation better with these arrows than the standard notation you often see, which goes like this. People write the times 3 right there. Okay, where they get six ninths. But I like this better, at least for starters, because these students can confuse it with multiplying the whole fraction times three. If, you, if I take this fraction and multiply it times three, I will take three copies of this, which would make much more pi to it, right? But in equivalent fractions, the amount of pi to it or pizza does not change the value of the fraction does not change. This is the same amount to eat as this. It just has been divided into more pieces. So this notation is trying to convey that. Okay? And this is maybe okay for later. Okay? But I don't like to start with that. Now, after students understand the basic idea, it's time for them to practice with more visual exercises like these ones here. They would have a picture here and instructions what to do split each piece into two new pieces. So here we just um, split it like this and then check what we have. We have here now six colored pieces and then ten total, so it is six tenths. And then they can write the arrows, draw the arrows, and put this times two times two. Okay, another example, split each piece into four. Okay. This would be, oh, I'm sorry, here, on this side. This would be split into four new pieces. So we would have four colored pieces. And then, of course, these two. So we get four times as many pieces. Four times six is 24. Both the numerator and the denominator get multiplied by four because there's four times as many pieces, four times as many colored pieces. Then, students can practice without the pictures, where it, you might say split each piece into four, okay? And then they would draw the arrows to help them, and put times four, times four, and then two times four is eight, nine times four is thirty-six. And here we have one number missing from this problem with equivalent fractions. And it is basically we are coming towards the more abstract and more abstract form. Okay, if you want to help the students, you could draw beforehand these arrows and put here times an empty box, times an empty box. The problem could look like this, okay? Or it can be just left as it was and then you instruct the students about the arrows and the little boxes and times. So they need to think 7 times what is 21 and the same number goes here and then 5 times 3 is 15. That's the basic idea. 
And as they get proficient, then they will remember themselves, okay, what to do. Here. Put times and some number. Here we go, three times three gives us nine. And so here two has to be th times three. So this time the student has to think what number times three is 33, which is 11. Okay, and then finally they have now arrived at the abstract form of these equivalent fraction problems and they can now do all the thinking themselves, think through the arrows and maybe not have to draw the arrows anymore, just think 5 times something is 35, okay, it is 5 times 7, therefore this number also times 7, 8 times 7, 56. And that way equivalent fractions won't be any more intimidating to students.